guys, welcome to Random Phantom Chats. I'm Dee Dee. I'm Tandra. And this is Annabeth. And today we're going to be talking about Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald. Now this movie has gotten a lot of negativity. And personally, I feel like we're kind of in like the 1% of people who actually liked it. Don't, it don't get me wrong, it has its flaws and it has some issues. But I overall liked it. I, I enjoyed too. it. I did too. Um, there was a few problems. confusing things. There was a definitely. few things that we had to come back afterwards and talk about mm -hmm. to see if we could understand. What... And we're pretty diehard like Harry Potter fans. Like, we we read a lot of the books and right. whatnot. So and we went online and looked a few things up mm -hmm. and read some things because. As a matter of fact, I thought it would be nice. You know how they sometimes novelize movies. Mm -hmm. I thought it'd be nice to actually have the novel to the. I, to I read. expected them to, and they do not. They, they have do not. a screenplay in book form that you can buy, but they don't have like an actual novelization of it. They which do. I feel like is a mistake. I, I feel like it would do really good. I would love to read a novelization of it because sometimes you can pick up on some things that's hard to tell mm -hmm. in the movie. J.K. Rowling wouldn't even have to write it herself. She could get somebody to ghostwrite it for her. Sure. I wouldn't even mind that. But I wouldn't mind to even read the screenplay. Might help because a lot of times there's directions or other things that help mm -hmm. you know some things that you know the. Movie movie itself can't convey. Right. Now, okay, so... There might be some spoilers, so yes, just... Yes, this will contain spoilers, so just... Just be know, aware of that if you haven't that. seen it. Because mm -hmm. we're going to kind of go through, or at least I wanted to go through some of the problems that most people seem to have with the movie, and, you know, whether or not we agree with them, or whether or not, you know, we feel like it's kind of an overreaction, or what. Right. So, first off, a lot of people had a problem with the opening scene with Grindelwald's ex escape from the prison. And I was having a little trouble following it myself. I was having trouble, like, knowing what they were doing to escape. Because, like, it seemed like... Because at first I thought that they were using some kind of polyjuice potion to, like, you know... Uh, trick them maybe, like maybe both of them drank the polyjuice potion, and the person in the carriage to start with was Grindelwald, he was just changing into that ministry lackey dude to like throw them off, but then I heard a lot of people say that no, it was a different spell, that like they actually completely switched places I don't know. Oh no, it was a little confusing. It was a little confusing, and like I said, like people who were going along with the theory that it was a completely different spell that they actually like switched places, then they were having a problem with like, oh well, if they completely switched places, why would Grindelwald like plan the whole escape, period, because at that point he would have He could just, just let, walked out. He would have just let his lackey get dragged off to Azkaban or wherever prison they were taking him to, and... My only counter for that, and this is even kind of a weak one, but like my counter for that would be that Grindelwald wanted to show his power. And it does seem a little bit like he was having fun doing that. Yeah, because he, he is a person that is very, you know, he's grandiose. He wants people to know that he is this powerful and he can do this. And not even the Ministry or the Makuza right. can contain him. So that's kind of the counter I would come up with right. to, you know, say, well, yeah, it's kind of a flimsy thing. But, like, you know, maybe that's what they were at least trying to do. Maybe they didn't do it very well with how they executed in the movie. But that could be what they were trying to do with what it. What was some of the other things that uh, people were having problems with? A lot of people had problems with, like, they felt like the movie overall dragged, and they especially didn't like the scene in Newt's house, like, when he was going through and, like, doing his stuff with the Kelpie? Is that the sea beast? Is that, is that the Kelpie? I think so, I yeah. That's the Kelpie. I think so. <laughs> we, this also needs to keep in mind, we've only seen the movie once. Yeah, Most, so most people doing these reviews have seen this multiple times, we have only seen it once. So yeah, that's, so that's just a little bit of a disclaimer. We might be wrong there, but I think so, right. But yeah, a lot of people had a problem. They're just like, oh, this is so boring. Like, why are you, like, going through this? I think it was just kind of a recap of Newt's character and, like, kind of like a scene to be like, Oh, well, in the first book, or book, in the first movie, you saw his, like, case of creatures. This is his house, you know? This is how, this is just how far his, you know, you know, habitat for creatures goes. Well, and one of the things I noticed online when I was looking up stuff trying to, you know, get some things cleared up in my head, some people panned the movie, both of the movies, actually, both of the, the um, Fantastic Beast movies, because they said that it's really not about Fantastic Beasts, and it's really not even about, you know... Newt Scamander. It, like, the first one was a lot more, but it is seeming to, like, shift a lot more of its focus towards Grindelwald. And, and it's like, okay, so it was based on a book that everybody recognized, and she's got a character mm -hmm. in there that supposedly wrote that book. 
And I, I think that's a fair it's criticism. A fair point, but they did show a lot of Fantastic Beasts. Yeah, well, like... Or at least three or four of them, anyway. Yeah, well, like, they always try to seem to incorporate the Fantastic Beasts into the plot of it. Like, you know, the beasts, like, help them out of scrapes or... Or like, the Niffler them. did something. Yeah. Or got something important. I or... feel like they could probably could have done that better in the Crimes of Grindelwald. Like, I felt like that kind of fell short a little bit, and they could have done a little bit more to incorporate that better. So, that that is a fair criticism. I, I will say that's... But on the other fair. hand, as a Harry Potter story, just in general from the yeah. universe, I enjoyed it. Oh, yeah. It and, was really good. And, like you said, his house... It, I thought it was just a fun scene to look yeah, at. Yeah, it was just a fun scene. Not every scene has to be, like, a phenomenal thing. Like, I know that people say, like, every scene has to have some kind of purpose, but I felt more it was more of, like, a character development purposes. Mm -hmm. Like, it was, it was like, uh, re-getting you familiar with Newt's character. Yeah, who he I is, what like. he's like, what he does. Mm -hmm. And like I said, it was just, a f like you said, it was just a fun, cool thing to see, you know, visually. Um, did you notice anything? There was a couple things later on in the movie... When they're bringing up, of course, it's towards the end, where they're bringing up uh, the boy and, and explaining mm -hmm. who he is. Yeah, that whole scene towards the end where they were, like, explaining, like, oh, well, he's, you know, Lestrange. No, he's not, because she switched the babies and their cribs and whatnot. I kind of felt that whole scene was a little info dumpy. Like, I felt it was kind of like they could have leaked some of this stuff in. Uh, or trick it in a little bit better earlier on in the movie. That way we could digest it a little bit better. Maybe. maybe. Also, it's kind of hard to know who is. I mean, he's supposed to be some sort of Dumbledore. We're mm -hmm. not sure which one, who, how. We're looking at Supposedly, ages. a lot of people, and I'm kind of in this boat, I kind of think that Grindelwald is just flat out lying in order to control Creedence. That's quite possible. Mm -hmm. um, we're looking at ages. Like, you know, we see a McGonagall in the movie for a few seconds, mm -hmm. and there are people like, well, that can't be Minerva. Minerva. And it's like, well, it doesn't have to be Minerva. Yeah, it could be... Also, and uh, it's also just like... <laughs> a mother or sister. It could be almost anybody. Uh, who, I've heard somebody else br bring this up on a review that, you know, McGonagall's not an uncommon name, and they are in Scotland, so it's like, it couldn't... It, it doesn't even have to be somebody who's related to Minerva McGonagall. That's true, too. a completely different Minerva That's McGonagall. true, too. Although, in that case, it'd be kind of weird that they, like, name-dropped it in the movie it if she wasn't at least little, related. She's probably at least related to an aunt or somebody. Mm -hmm. But because they were going along with the official when people were supposedly born, mm -hmm. you know, Dumbledore. Mm -hmm. Which McGonagall, some of that stuff has people. been retconned over the years. The ages have changed a little bit. Right. The characters. Because that's where, because people are like, well, this can't be Dumbledore's son because, or mm -hmm. brother. Or brother. But that's just it. Most people are just kind of jumping to the conclusion that they're alluding that Credence is a uh, brother of Albus, but they're not even necessarily saying that. They're just saying he's a Dumbledore, period. Like, um, like you said, when we got home that night and started looking stuff up, when you look up the Dumbledores on Wikipedia, it just lists him as a uh, alleged relative. It doesn't even say alleged brother. It just says relative in general. So it could be a cousin, could be a nephew. We don't know. Yeah. And, like, and like I said, I still kind of think that Grindelwald is just, you know, completely lying. And that's a possibility. Mm -hmm. So I guess we won't know until we see another one. But I I think they're fun to watch. Mm -hmm. I, if you if you like the Harry Potter universe, if you like it, it's just you know, it's just definitely there. something to just, you know, stimulate us Harry Potter fans, I feel like. I feel like it was definitely made for Harry Potter fans. Definitely. And like and like pretty deep fans like not even just casual fans i was surprised over a lot of the older people i saw i mean people older than me mm -hmm. at the movie theater without any younger children with yeah. them i thought wow you know are they harry potter fans or did Maybe. this movie just look interesting know. to them or you know why mm -hmm. because there was a lot of them it wasn't just one or two it was like it 20 was it was quite a few <laughs> Now, something that I kind of noticed, I don't know if anybody else noticed this or even would agree with me, but during the movie, I kind of got the feeling or, like, had the perception that they were trying to borrow a lot from the feel of Empire Strikes Back, which is mostly widely considered, like, one of the best middle movies of a trilogy of all time. Of course, this is not a trilogy. It's actually going to be five movies, but it is a middle movie. So, I don't know. I kind of felt like... With, like, the pace it was taking, 
the overall downer of a ending to the movie with just a tiny bit of hope towards the end. I kind of felt like yeah, they were trying to... there was a lot to, of downer stuff, you yeah, know. Yeah, I kind of felt like they were trying to borrow from, like, some of the aspects of Empire Strikes Back, at least personally. Which could hurt, I suppose. Yeah, like I said, it's widely considered one of the best middle movies of a mm. series ever, so, you know. Was there anything else that a lot of people are really going, oh, I hate this or I like this, or, you know, was there anything uh, else you noticed? Like I said, there's not really a lot that people seem to like. <laughs> Most people are just like, I like the characters, but I like the characters because of the first movie. So, um, okay. Uh, mostly, Which I did too. I was a little unhappy over what they did with, uh, all of a sudden I can't think of his name, but the, the one human character who had the girlfriend. Jacob. Jacob and Queenie. Yeah, I was a little unhappy with what they did with that. I saw that coming a mile away. Though. I just wasn't sure exactly what the purpose behind that was. I think it was mostly just kind of to show that like, Grindelwald does have this very charismatic feature to him. He can really just kind of bend people's perceptions yeah, and wants to his own ends. And, like, you know, she is a powerful um, Legilimens and whatnot, so I could see him wanting to, like, get her on his side and just kind of having her in his arsenal to yeah, say. Yeah, I suppose I get that. Mm -hmm. So, s some people were criticizing Grindelwald's character, period, just because he seemed like a very, like, uh, politically right type person and the things he was doing, but it's like that was supposed to be his character. Yeah, that's so I, what he I don't understand why that is a point of criticism for some yeah, people. Yeah, that was what he was always That about. was what he was supposed to be. And I felt like they actually showcased his ability to kind of like change people's fears and perceptions and use them to his advantage. I felt they actually presented that very well. And I'm actually kind of liking him as a villain just a smidge better than Voldemort. Oh, yeah. Because he's got more charisma. He's got more charisma and like he is modeled after a lot more real life villains, I feel like, a lot more. Yeah, or so, even just people that we would just, just a politician we would know. Yeah, right. Uh, I so mean, I feel like he's a little yeah. bit more realistic and like, you know, like I said, he emulates more people in history from that point of view. Which I guess Voldemort was like that at first and mm -hmm. then he just became pure evil, which maybe. Yeah. Maybe. And by that point, because we were seeing him after he already got all those followers and used his charms and whatnot. So right. Voldemort was supposed to be that type of person, too. We just didn't see that as right. much. Which made sense for the time period the story took place. Right. But still, I, I like seeing that development of a villain. I it, like seeing that. And it looks like they're leading up to the big fight between mm -hmm. Grindelwald and Voldemort. Right. So I'm, Voldemort. <laughs> <laughs> Grindelwald and Dumbledore. Dumbledore. Which um, I'm, so I'm not sure, like, what they're going to do with the movies between that. I'm um, not sure, but it looks like that's where they're heading. I personally um, feel like this series would have been a lot better if it was a trilogy. I mean, they could pull it off for five movies. Well, they're we'll still way back see. in the th 30s, and, and the fight's supposed to happen, like, in 45 or something. Mm -hmm, yeah. So there's a lot that could happen in between where he could really start rising to power and mm -hmm. really come to a head where, where Dumbledore's really going to have to do something. Mm -hmm. Now, one final thing I did want to point a uh, touch on that I actually do have a criticism for the movie is... What is the deal with that weird skull bong thing that he has, Grindelwald, that he was using throughout the movie to, like, see into the future? Like, do you remember what I'm talking about? What was that thing? Because it was just kind of there. Like, they, they, like, showed him, like, using it a couple of times, and then he used it to, like project the future of like World War II to Maybe his audience. Maybe it's supposed to be kind of like a scryer type deal or And that's or, fine. Like I, know, I, remember, I can believe you know, that. I don't remember all but the um like a pensive, the pensive. Picture, or like some kind of divination yeah. tool yeah, or something. Yeah, it's supposed to be something like And that. that's fine. Like I don't have a problem with the object in of itself. I just wish they had had like taken like 30 seconds to explain it like all they needed was like a little scene at his hideout where one of his newer followers was like well what exactly is that thing and somebody else was like oh it's a ancient divination thing that a famous you know prophet used to use or something like something. just something simple like i just wanted them to take like 30 <laughs> seconds or a minute to explain it because i'm just you're like what is that thing <laughs> well if you don't want to spend money seeing it in the theaters um you know, just wait for just it to wait come for out it to come out and, and watch whatnot. it. 
I would um, at least give it a chance. I would go into it knowing that you're going to have to pay attention to a lot of things and you're going to have to do a lot of speculation afterwards and even look up some stuff because like I said we had to look up some stuff and we're pretty deep Harry Potter fans so so I would just go into that movie with that in mind. But there was a lot of fun stuff in it. It was kind of an interesting story and I just like Newt as a character so yeah that's so, a, it's that's all right. right. Yeah. Well, thank you for tuning into the channel. If you like us, please subscribe. Put down any suggestions you have of any future videos you'd like to see. And we'll see you next time. Bye.